My parents are a little worried about Erdogan visiting Sarajevo in Bosnia. And I don't consider Bosnia to be a western country, but they are right on our doorstep. Now addressing the elephant in the room, because today I'm going to talk about why Turkey does not belong in the European Union and most definitely not NATO. Liberals will probably attack me for saying this is another rant which shows my willingness to deny non-Western people into the West, and yeah, they are right, but there's more to it, because I've been to Turkey when I was 17, and while yes, they are Muslim, they're not like Arabs or Kurds. They drink, they smoke, they party, women are promiscuous, and they even elected their first female prime minister in 1993. But there is a bigger story as to why they need to leave a Western alliance. Spoiler alert, this is not going to be about the downing of a Russian jet back in 2015. I actually supported that action. Well, time to move on to my reasons. Ever since 1952, when Turkey joined the alliance, it has become a bridge between the West and the Islamic world. However, that was the situation many years ago. Cracks are now starting to develop between the two as time moves on. This also reflects on how Turkey, as a society, is not Western. It does not belong in a Western alliance pact. To go into further detail, it culturally lacks much of what makes up a Western country. Western nations value a certain culture of philosophy, democracy, human rights, science, art, and Judeo-Christian morals. They also value the concept of a nation-state while being heavily influenced by the Renaissance, Age of Enlightenment, and Industrial Revolution. Despite its reforms and secular laws, Turkey has deep roots in its Middle Eastern heritage, putting aside the fact that the majority of the country is still Muslim, despite them being less conservative, the country has become more strict than ever before. In 2013, the Parliament of Turkey passed legislation that bans all forms of advertising alcoholic beverages, as well as tightening alcoholic sales. Criticism of the Islamic faith has recently been seen as blasphemy, and a controversial conviction of a pianist, Fazl Seyfer, joking about the Islamic prayer was a main subject of anger. Also in 2013, the Turkish Ministry of Education rewrote several books to include Muslim doctrines such as Pinocchio, Heidi, Tom Sawyer, and even the book The Three Musketeers was rewritten to include a character's conversion to Islam. None of these actions align with the Western society, and there are more examples. Also a subject of debate has been the question of Turkey's EU memberships. In order for a country to join, it must meet 30 requirements that are parallel to Western society from human rights to the economy. Turkey applied to join in 1987, and do you know how many boxes it has checked off? Just one. What's more alarming is that NATO has very similar requirements as stated in the Article 10 of its treaty. Any nation that wishes to join the North Atlantic Council must be geographically located in Europe, which Turkey for the most part is not. Certain political goals and a capable military force. From there it can join the membership action plan and then to become a member it must also have an adequate economic stance, certain legal aspects which Turkey is very shaky on in both. These are the minimum requirements that every single nation individually must have and the remaining steps are ascension talks, ratifying the ascension protocol and adapting its own bill of ratification. But Turkey falls short on all of these initial requirements, such as economic policies, legal aspects, geographic location, as well as my two sub-reasons, which are categories all their own. Going against one of the requirements for a Western nation, the Turkish government has been attempting to remove its democratic stance. The best example was the 2017 constitutional referendum, which saw a slight victory in favor of the current President Recep Tayyip Erdogan. The referendum was held on whether to approve 18 proposed amendments to the Turkish constitution that were brought by the governing political party in Turkey, the Justice and Development Party, and the Nationalist Movement Party. The legislation would abolish the office of the Prime Minister and the existing parliamentary system of government would be replaced with an executive presidency and presidential system. The number of seats in Parliament was proposed to be raised from 550 to 600, while the President was proposed to be given more control over appointments to the Supreme Board of Judges and Persecutors. The referendum was heavily criticized by pretty much everyone, as election monitors even stated that the vote did not meet international standards. It is our wish to make this process constructive. I was scandalized by what was said coming from Turkey, on the Netherlands, on Germany and on others. I will never accept this comparison between the Nazis and the now uh, governments.
You know, my home country, Luxembourg, was occupied by the Nazis. Our people were suffering. My father was forced into the German army together with his three brothers. brothers. If you are establishing a comparison of that period with our times, this is totally unacceptable. And the one who is doing this is taking distance from Europe and not trying to enter the European Union. The European Union is not joining Turkey. Turkey is joining the European Union. The referendum saw backlash because of arguments that the proposals would concentrate too much power in the hands of the president, effectively dismantling the segregation of powers and taking legislative authority away from parliament. It was argued that the system would resemble an elected dictatorship with no ability to hold the executive to account, leading effectively to a democratic suicide. You can easily see that there were a lot of aspects that did show that this was not a fair referendum. The system was already being planned as the previous Prime Minister resigned, I'm guessing under which circumstances, and the detaining of journalists that spoke against Erdogan. Another big factor was the state's suppression of no voters. Many no activists face arrest with charges of insulting the president and state while having limited campaign activism. One study even found that the Yes campaign received 90% of airtime. Originally, Turkish law makes overseas campaigning illegal, even in diplomatic missions. In some European countries like Germany and the Netherlands, voters were found to possess leaflets before the referendum started, as well as using false identities to vote multiple times. If these fraudulent actions were done outside the country, imagine what it was like inside the country. It is quite easy to see that this was not a proper democracy. The US attempted to start a coup in Ankara but failed. Shut the fuck up. Coups have been a common thing in Turkey for centuries. The attempted one in 2016 was nothing new. But one thing that must be understood is that coups shouldn't take place in democracies where there are clear laws of succession. Coups are a sign of instability in the government. And all research has shown that coups do not promote democratization, but only make them more authoritarian over time. It is absolutely unbelievable that a country like this is still allowed to be a NATO member as it loses the democracy requirement, which is one of the three initial needs. One more reason why Turkey shouldn't be in NATO is because of the current political goals that do not align with the West. And I'm not talking about Ankara's warming up to Russia, but pro-Middle Eastern and even pro-ISIS ambitions. Researchers from Columbia University have reported strong links between Erdogan and the Islamic State, such as providing arms, logistical assistance, training, recruitment, and even purchase of oil. There have also been claims that Turkish forces fought alongside ISIS on the battlefield, such as the battle for Kobani. Turkey also shows its further shifting allegiance to the Middle East by joining the Islamic Military Coalition, an intergovernmental alliance of Muslim nations. It has basically joined a NATO with values that are not in line with ours. Why would we still have them in our alliance if they are now in their own kind? So I want to finally put it that the only reason why Turkey is in NATO is because of its strategic position. So Western countries can control the Bosphorus Strait. What I would also like to say is that it really doesn't make much difference who's in the Black Sea as long as we can enter another country that does want Western ideals and that is Ukraine. Should the country see improvement and actually manage to join the Transatlantic Alliance, the entire Black Sea would be available to Western ships and aircraft. Turkey may have been the West's door into the Middle East, but it's safe to say that time is now over. Even Ankara's politicians have expressed their criticism of the West and have called the European Union a Christian club and about how NATO must disappear from the Middle East. This is also echoed across the West as it's quite clear that Turkey is no longer seen as our friend.